Jesus' name, welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church, because today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And yes, it is. And it is a beautiful day to come together in this way and to worship with you, regardless if there is still winter snows that fly through the air. We know that spring is around the corner, and it is going to change here quickly. But it is a beautiful day to come and worship. We've got a couple of announcements. One is we are embarking on our last week of Lent for our Lenten worship service that will take place here in person at 6 p.m. for our dinner. 6.45, we'll begin worship And around 7 o'clock or so, we'll have our guest speaker share about how their faith is a part of their life, personally, a part of their family, and a part of their vocation. And this Wednesday, for the in-person, and if you choose to Zoom at the same time, we'll hear from Jeff Statham, um, our police chief here in town. And we're really looking forward to seeing how his faith is a part of everything he does. Exactly. It's exciting and it's been fun journeying through Lent with these individuals and and them sharing their faith with us as it helps us to grow in our own faith as we hear those words. We have a couple of Sundays that are coming up that are important Sundays. This Sunday here today um, is a new member Sunday, and so we have a couple of families that are joining this community of believers, and so we ask that you hold them in prayer as uh, they come into this family and are received with opened arms and are welcomed in. And then also next Sunday, Palm Sunday, is, is a special Sunday. We will be uh, portraying the Last Supper. Um, it's a, a tradition, a play that we have done over the past few years. We haven't, it's been a couple of years since we've done right. it, but uh, we're excited. And we will be bringing that to you um, virtually as well. And so uh, we invite you to join us a week uh, from today on Palm Sunday and uh, help us to journey that journey of Jesus into the city of Jerusalem and as they prepare the Passover meal. Absolutely. Well, with that, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Join me for confession and forgiveness. God, we hear your invitation to us. Come to me, you who are weary and heavy burdened. I will give you rest. We acknowledge our soul's need for rest and quiet nourishment. We lay down our burdens. We acknowledge our soul's need of connection with you. We confess our tendency to overlook rest as a necessary part of soul and self-care. We confess our pride in thinking that our work is so important that we may not set it down. We confess our readiness to believe that what we do determines our worth. 
We confess our obsession with productivity, results, measurable progress. We confess our tendency to forget that it is in you that we live and move and have our being and that your love is better than life. We ask now for body, mind, spirit, whole person, nourishment. For rest and resurrection, for new life, for healing and consolation of our souls. We ask for help in managing our time and activities so that our infillings keep up with our outpourings. Where we have overspent ourselves, refresh us. Where we have misplaced our priorities, rearrange us. Where we have said yes when we should have said no, remind us. We thank you for meaningful work, for blessings and burdens. We thank you for rest. May we become present to our great need for daily bread, the presence of Christ in our lives. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins. Not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ risen from the dead. Rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. To give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I form for myself, so that they might declare my praise. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading is from Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his suffering by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward towards what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Here ends our second reading. This time I invite us to gather for the children's message. Well, good morning, kids. Welcome to our children's message this morning. Good to see you, Pastor Eric. It's great to be with you, Alan. Yes. Now, this morning, I'm going to talk a little bit about... um, how God created us. Not so much about how God created us, but what he created us to do. So we're going to talk, Pastor Eric, about our five senses. Okay. Now, just a couple of seconds ago, I said, it's good to see, see you. you. Ooh. So our eyes 
are a nice. part of our senses. We can see everything around us. Okay. Okay. And we can hear us talking, right? I can I hope hear you. the goodness, my friends, that you can hear us virtually as we come through the technology that we have here before us so that we can hear each other. Because I can hear you both through the speakers and because I'm sitting next to you. I feel like my ears are fully functioning. All right. That's good. I want you to be listening, okay? Because listening is a part of hearing. All right. Then there's this, mmm, this shirt tastes good. Taste. Ah, yes. Taste is a sense that God has created us. So when we are eating that chocolate ice cream, Ooh, we can feel the chocolate ice cream and we can taste it as we're eating it. And the many other foods that we enjoy. Now, if we put something in our mouth that we don't like, it's bad. You know, and we maybe would spit it out. Sure. But it's a sense of taste that God has granted us with. And then when we shake hands, ah, oh, yes, there's that sense of feeling, okay? Being able to touch somebody else's hand when we shake or when we pick something up, if it's cold or if it's hot, that protects us. It helps us to keep us safe, that sense of feeling. Now, there's one more sense. That was four of them. What's that other fifth scent? <laughs> hmm, the fresh air smells so good. Oh, I think you got it. I think it's the sense of smell. Oh, yes. Oh. It's in the nose. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. God has given us that sense of smell to be able to breathe in the fresh air to be able to smell the flowers, to be able to smell the trees and the grass as we come into spring. It's a beautiful time, and that is a beautiful sense that God has blessed us with. Absolutely. Today's gospel reading, we hear of Mary, a friend of Jesus, using um, a perfume. Now, do you know what a perfume is? Yeah. Perfume is, is something that maybe mom or dad put on to make you smell good, right? And so this morning, we're going to just talk a little bit about perfumes. So Pastor Eric, we've got some perfumes here, right? Right. I think there are smelling oils or oils that have a distinct smell, smell to, to them. Really? Wow. Now, are you going to open and smell what's in your bag? I will. Okay, you, you go first and see if you can tell what that smells like. Okay. Whew. Hmm. I think, and it, it brings back a memory of iced tea in the summer with some lemon. Oh, that's a lemon smell in I there. I think okay. so. All right. All right, you ready for you? I have no idea what this is. I might have to let you figure it out too. Hmm. Doesn't smell like a skunk. Okay, that's good. Do you know what a skunk smells like? I do. I do too. That doesn't smell good. This almost has a, like a, like a frankincense smell to Ooh, it. Ooh, yeah. Here, you try it and see what you think. Like a frankincense and cinnamon. It's cinnamon? got a little cinnamon bite to it. Ah, awesome. Well, my friends, there are smells in our life that um, are really beautiful smells, Good smells that we enjoy. There are smells that we sometimes don't enjoy. But in this gospel reading that we heard today is about this perfume that Mary was putting on Jesus because she was preparing him, giving him that sweet smell because she loved him. She cared about him. And so as we begin to journey in through the end of this Lenten season, as spring starts to come out and the flowers start to bloom and such, be reminded of that beautiful sense that God has given to us to be able to smell. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you for creating the human bodies with these five special senses that allow us to see, to hear, to taste, to touch, and to smell. 
May we smell the sweet beauty of your creation. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. See you next Sunday. The gospel for this Sunday is coming from the gospel writer John, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served. And Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard and anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of perfume. 
but Judas. Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, the human body is an amazing creation that God has given to us. As you really think about all of the intricate parts of the human body and how we move and, 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 and such, it's just, it just blows my mind. And especially when we talk about our five senses. You know, the five senses that we have is we can see and we can hear, we can taste, we can touch, and we can smell. Beautiful senses that help us to maneuver through life, keeping us safe, understanding and seeing what creation is around us through our senses. Each sense has a special purpose and a special meaning for each individual. I understand that if you know one loses one of those five senses, the other four heighten themselves and become even stronger, even more important. Our sense of smell. That's what I wanted to just kind of dwell on a little bit today is that sense of smell, an understanding of what smell does for us. Do you know that a newborn baby can smell its mother? Can know that she is holding him and taking care of this newborn baby? The sense of smell. Smell also helps keep us from danger. We can have that sense of smell for smoke. Because if we smell smoke, we know that there's a fire someplace. And so it heightens our awareness. We look around. Our sense of smell can protect us from that skunk. I know that many of us have been driving down that road, and all of a sudden that aroma will hit us and go, whoa. Whoa. There's a skunk close by. A sense of smell helps warn us against love. Now, you might say, whoa, really? Love? Yes, love. <laughs> if there was any one of you that was to walk into a room with the perfume called rain, Bells and whistles would go off in my mind. I would get really kind of excited, kind of nervous, because that is the scent <laughs> that my wife, Linda, 40 years ago, lured me into love. <laughs> that scent still is evident in my mind, even today. Perfumes and fragrances of love. If it weren't for the love of my wife that she has for me, I would stink like a man. Yep, I would. And so would all of you other men out there. But because my wife Linda loves me, she gives to me a bottle of cologne as a gift as a sense of love and caring for me as I use that cologne daily. 
Now, I could say to her, you know what, honey, the amount that you paid for this little bottle of cologne maybe would have bought us an electric motor to put on the back end of the canoe so I wouldn't have to canoe anymore. Perfumes. A fragrance of love. Did you realize that the perfume industry in 2020 was worth roughly $33.9 billion and is projected that by 2028, the perfume industry will be worth about $43 billion. People love fragrances, are drawn to fragrances through the sense of smell. Thus bringing us to today's gospel reading. Today's gospel reading, there is a verse in there that reads like this. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and then wiped him with her hair. The house was filled with a fragrance of perfume. As Pastor Eric and I were preparing for this week's service, Pastor Eric said, wouldn't it be cool if we put a fan up front here and we put some fragrance out there and blew it out into the congregation so that the room would be filled with this perfume? I thought it was a great idea until I thought, well, maybe somebody might be allergic to that specific scent. And we would find people coughing and sneezing. Perfume. What was Mary doing? What was she doing with this perfume that she was putting on Jesus' feet and then wiping it off with her hair? I think for us to better understand what was taking place in this moment, I think we need to back up one chapter in the Gospel writer of John and take a look at what took place prior to chapter 12. And I think as I read portions of it and paraphrase it for you, you'll understand and know what was taking place in that moment. So in chapter 11, it reads, Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and the sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Wait a minute now. I just told you I'm going to back up and read in chapter 11. And I'm hearing words from chapter 11 what are being said in chapter 12. An act that is taking place in chapter 12. What is the gospel writer John doing here? Well, as a writer... You can look at that and you can say he's foreshadowing what is happening or what is going to happen in chapter 12. And that's what's happening here. So in chapter 11, we are recognizing Mary as the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. And then it quickly goes on to say, her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus saying, Lord, he who you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Hmm. What's going to take place? After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. And I'm going to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he'll be okay. See, once once Jesus had received this news that Lazarus was ill, it was two days before he decided to go and see him. And then the disciples reminded him, it's a 12-hour walk from here. And furthermore, you don't want to go into the city because there are people that are thinking ill thoughts of you. And if he is just asleep, 
he'll be all right. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. And Jesus said, take away the stone. <laughs> and Martha says, wait a minute, wait a minute. Lord, already there is a stench. Already there is a smell. Because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe that you would see the glory of God? He stinks. It's the smell of death. I think we've all have witnessed that smell. Jesus then raised Lazarus, and now we find ourselves in today's gospel reading. They're at the house. They'd gathered together this group of friends and the disciples. And they were eating a meal. It says that, that they were eating a meal. As I thought about that, I thought, they're at the house half, having an Easter dinner. They're having an Easter dinner, the resurrection of Lazarus, sort of. But it is in that moment that it comes together. When Mary, anyway, I think fully grasps it, fully believes that it is here that Mary knows the ministry that Jesus was fulfilling. He's going to die. And she's preparing him with her expensive perfume. It was to show her love for him or was it to overcome the smell of death that Jesus may be experiencing? Whatever it was, whether it was love or that understanding that Jesus was going to die and that she wanted that perfume to overpower death, Judas wasn't happy. Judas says, what is she doing? What is she doing? She could have saved that and sold it, given the money to the poor. What is she doing? I'm going to ask you this question. If you knew that you were going to die tomorrow, what would you do today? If you knew that you were going to die tomorrow, what would you do today? Many of you might be thinking, whoa, that's pretty heavy to think about. Pre-planning a funeral is hard. <laughs> Planning a funeral after you're dead is harder. Talking about one's own death or even the death of someone that you love is difficult. And many of us shy away from those conversations. We become selfish at a time of death. We don't want to let go. We want to keep going. We want to keep living as we know it here and now on this earth. It may not even be about the fear of death, but more about the separation of death. We become selfish. We want to hold on. How many times do we hear of families torn apart due to the selfishness of grief and in time of grief? That's what's happening here. Judas thought it was ridiculous for Mary to be wasting this perfume on Jesus. 
in times of extreme grief, we allow all kinds of emotions to come to the surface. Some of these emotions stink. I believe Mary knew fully well what was taking place. She fully trusted and believed in Jesus. She was preparing him for his death. And not only was she preparing him for his death, but she was preparing him for his resurrection. Nothing else mattered to her right at this moment. The only thing that mattered was her love and her trust in whom we know as our risen Lord and Savior. So my friends, as we continue to journey through this Lenten season, let us be reminded, reminded of our own mortalities, being open and honest about death and realizing that one day we will die. And in that, helping our loved ones, our families, our friends to prepare for one's death in love and in the assurance of the sweet smells of life eternal. Amen. church, let us confess our faith. I believe, I believe in God, God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Gracious God, we ask that you do a new thing in the church. Free us from the paradigms that no longer serve the gospel and bring forward leaders who imagine fresh ways of doing ministry. Give us courage in the face of change. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing for creation. Reverse the trajectory of climate change and environmental catastrophe. Revive habitats already impaired by human disregard. Amplify the voices of climate scientists and researchers working to chart a new course. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing in our world. Break barriers that prevent political enemies from working together for the well-being of all. Make a way for peace and collaboration among the nations. We pray this day for the country of Ukraine. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing for those who suffer. Comfort those who grieve and restore those who are sick. We lift before you this day Artis Johnson, Brody Setter, Dave McDonald, Mimi Urig, Steve Anderson, Terry Sorum, Carol Kubas, Dave Husaby, Jim King, Charles Nettested, Bruce Femling, Marv Martinson, and any others who we lift before you from our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing in our death. Fill us with the knowledge of Christ and that the power of his resurrection as we give thanks for all the saints who have attended the prize of their heavenly call. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us all embrace each other in Christ's reconciling peace. God's peace, Pastor Eric. Peace be with you, Alan. God's peace be with each of you. At this time, let us give thanks for the offering we receive, proclaim Christ through word and deed in everything we do here at Trinity, locally in Pelican Rapids, Minnesota, throughout the state of Minnesota, this country, and even beyond, globally on other continents. Let us pray. Merciful God, we We offer with joy and thanksgiving thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our our time, and and our our possessions, possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Our Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come, thy thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Make disciples, baptizing them, teaching them. Go, make disciples.
My friends, as we come to the close of this service, as we go out into the week in front of us, take a moment to stop and smell the smells that God has blessed us with. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone. See you next week. God bless.